it's one of the largest panel I have, and I'm very, very excited as well, not only because of the number of panelists I have to speak to, but also about the topic, which is very new on my panel today. It's about startup advice, education and training and the investments and the trends and whatnot. It's about 2020 that we're going to talk about and focus on the trends of the year. Um, so yes, welcome to VCTV, the Venture Capital TV. It's from La Chokin. The first, uh, the first speaker of the panel is Ladies First. I'm going to start with Julia from Hong Kong. She's dialing up for a very long time. Hi, Julia. Hope you're doing good. How are you? It's been a while. See you. Really great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Julia Charlton. I'm a lawyer in Hong Kong. I've been uh, doing this job for many years and uh, obviously 2020 has been exceptionally challenging. My law firm works and me personally, we work on startups. We work on capital raise, VC, private equity rounds. We act for investors. We also act for companies and we also help them all the way through to stock exchange exits. There's been a couple of those this year. But generally speaking, it's been a really tough year for, for our clients. So I've spent a lot of time in terms of education and training. Well, I think I've done about 20 or more webinars, training sessions, a lot of them focusing around corporate governance, um, listing exits for companies and so on. We're doing another series about the when a company hits financial difficulties, because obviously that's a huge thing. So the challenge for me this year has really been to be supportive to our clients because a lot of the time they can't really afford legal fees if they're in the startup space and they really need desperately need advice, which obviously I have to try to support them to give to some extent. Others, and I'll talk about that a bit more later, have been doing extremely well if they're in a sweet spot and others have got great businesses, but perhaps because the customer side isn't as busy and they're not getting as much revenue and they need to raise money, they're getting squeezed on the valuations and it's much more difficult for them to deal with investors. And we've seen quite a lot of that this year. So really the education and training and the communication with startups and indeed with investors it's, it's just been so important during 2020 and of course so much of that has been online endless zoom meetings for lawyers um, calls very late at night about what to do if the directors think they haven't got enough money to keep trading and talking people through that as well as more formal training and I've done quite a lot of work with the stock exchange on a new ESG that's environmental and social governance and corporate governance guide from a practical point of view, where I interviewed lots of service providers about how they could practically help companies, particularly at the smaller end of the market, to actually pay attention to their environmental and social governance and their corporate governance. So there's a lot going on, but it's very, very challenging. And of course, Hong Kong remains very dynamic. We've had, I think, a 6% increase in the number of startups this year over last ah. year. But of course, that's a massively lower number than the previous year, which was 21% over the previous year. So things are continuing here and I'm looking forward to telling you more about it. Thank you, Julia. What a start, 6% rise as compared to 21%. I'm gonna know more about that. Julia, let's, let's just drill down a little bit into a startup story, a success um, pivot, a successful use case that I'd like to share with our audience. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Well, you know, there's been quite a few that I've been working on. And one was an online debt factoring platform, which has actually won the HKMA, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority's FinTech of the Year Award, and is really expediting SME funding in Hong Kong. But perhaps one which has actually been through a funding round this year I've been working on, I'll mention, it's called Praxonomy. And it's, um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's been sort of a year of extremes. Um, I think some companies which found themselves in the right place have just done brilliantly and have been really hot. They're in e-commerce, they're in healthcare or, you know, sort of related, uh, the right kind of healthcare related industries. And others have struggled more because of client onboarding. And the one that I would like to mention is Praxonomy, which is an online board portal. So if boards of directors of large boards, funds, listed companies, and so on, they, they want to have all their board documents online. They want to be able to um, link that to Zoom to move straight to a meeting, and they need it all in a secure environment. Now, obviously, that type of business is just made for this kind of environment because nobody can deliver hard copies of documents um, sending things out by email isn't necessarily secure. So to put everything in that um, universe of a secure board portal is, is uh, a wonderful concept. And it was quite new 
It was starting off at the end of last year and they were fundraising then. They managed to get some money, but they did it. They managed to do another successful raise this year. Um, tough negotiations, but they got quite a large strategic investor to come in betting on the growth of this kind of business in this market. And this is an entirely Hong Kong grown um, startup, which is serving obviously Hong Kong companies, listed companies of which there are many, but there's, you know, it, it, it's also been recommended by the London Stock Exchange as a, as a suitable secure portal. So it has a very diverse range of um, users and it did raise the money to continue to grow this year. So I think that's important. Another one which has done well is a company called Indemandly, and that is a sort of that's a widget, which is a contact widget software, and um, which floats on top of websites. So instead of going into someone's website and looking for inquiries and sending them a message, you just click on something and you quickly can type into it, and it would be on on the top of the website on a mobile phone. It can be linked to the emails. It's linked to all the social media of the business, which is um, seeking people to contact them with inquiries for calls, meetings or pricing or whatever. And that's been doing very well because clearly there's so many sales, so much has been going on online that they were just in a good place to really increase their business and their profile. But of course, at the same time, a lot of customers just don't have a lot of money for discretionary spending. So I think that does place some constraints on the paid versions or increasing fees for many of these business related um, software products, which are not, they're, you know, they're not very expensive and you can clearly make a case for using them, but they're not cheap either. They are a cost. So these types of products have really got to justify themselves in this market. And I think those two are successful, they've managed to. I mean, I have other clients who, for example, wonderful AI company, they're just fantastic. But you know, you have to be in the right place with robots and so on. So robotics at the moment is probably not quite so um, so hot because robotics, which unless they have very specific applications like medicine or defense or something like that, they're much more useful for sort of physical events and so on, where people are captivated by interaction with robotics and so on. But all of this is going on in Hong Kong. You know, we have startups across a range of industries. I think we've got about nearly 500 startups in the finance sector. So, yeah, those are some examples of what I've been working on recently. Excellent, uh, Julia. Excellent. Three success stories coming out of Hong Kong and one of them won by Hong Kong One Jury Authority. Mm. Um, wow. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those with our audience. This is the time of opening up the floor for all the panelists to talk to each other. Any questions for any other panelist here? I'm opening up the floor for you to, to ask questions to each other. Any questions, please? Anyone? Uh, let me let me um, give uh, you know. I, let me break the ice. Uh, what I what is the uh, overriding element for you that uh, pushes the decision making process towards a yes? So, what do you want to see in a proposal that is hard to resist? Very good question. Julia, do you have anything to add here? Um, only, just, only just really quickly, you know, because I see this as a lawyer, but to some extent, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I do run my own law firm. Um, I think it's to echo what's being said, who you hire is incredibly important. And, you know, obviously it's very important that the founders are deeply engaged themselves, but who the talent they manage to bring on and inspire and inspiring that passion around them is terribly important. But the other thing just very mundane I see is that when really quite great ideas and companies come to raise money, they can fall over if they haven't got their documentation and their regulatory position in order. And obviously a lot of startups push boundaries and that's absolutely fine, you would expect that, but you still need to have everything in relatively good shape, not with massive legal problems because you could have the best business in the world and if an investor sees some massive legal problem, they're not gonna invest. So sorting everything out in a relatively organized way, which is challenging for a startup, they're busy, that's maybe not their skill set or their interest and hiring lawyers is expensive, but you know, I, I do, caution that all of that is also pretty important although it's very boring <laughs> all right very key point as well legal stuff 
Thank you so much, Julia, for that. Uh, starting from Julia, closing remarks for the show on the topic and your VCTV best moments for the year. What are your best moments on VCTV so far? Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yes, I, I was uh, talking before, but this has been wonderful, fantastic listening to these terribly knowledgeable people here. So this is definitely a good moment. But uh, earlier this year, I was on a social impact investing event on uh, VCTV, and that was incredibly moving because we heard so much about some amazing stories about social impact investing in India. And I actually talked about a silk um, business in Myanmar, which I was talking about, which is um, employing women in Chin state and it was all amazing of course that's been totally affected by covid but i just want to mention great ending to that because they've pivoted like even though they're social impact like entrepreneurs and they're making the most beautiful silk masks which are actually selling for quite a lot of money and they're posting them all over the world and shipping them and so on so um yes we all have to pivot and stay entrepreneurial thank you so much julia that was my panel i remember that very clearly thank yeah. you <laughs> Vandana, my closing remarks for the show. I said, we have the startups, we have the investors, we have the community, as Gary rightly said. So please, who is stopping you now? Feel free to reach out to me and VCTV team, and we're going to help you place on the, on the panels with all these amazing speakers that we have on the uh, uh, every day. So we cover uh, different topics every day. We have different speakers from all around the world, as everybody said. So that's the whole idea. Startups, founders, investors, and the community. We all make VCTV. Thank you so much again for your time, your insights. I really enjoyed the panel as always. Bye-bye.